All right, Canis 415, spring. My thing is tethered, and I keep knocking it. Sorry, let's start again. Start from the beginning. The earth cooled, then dinosaurs came. Spring 21, um, Brian Campbell here trying to bestow some clarification for some of you. Uh, remember a lot of the, the concepts from 310 carry over. It's a continuation, right, with specific muscles and functions. So we, uh, for some of you, you may hear me recite the same thing over and over and over and over and, and make that be that as a lesson. That's how difficult it is sometimes to just either understand or, or to not get uh, caught up with muscles and motion. Um, okay. Muscles themselves are not responsible for motion. Muscles and their contractions responsible for motion. And the one thing that muscles always do, regardless of motion, which can change, contractions, which can change, is pull in a certain direction. And that's why we give them their function. I know some of you are like, dude, why you keep saying that? I keep saying that because we have some students that still keep missing that. So that's why I have to keep saying it. My job as a teacher, you know, I, I, it, there's people that ride bikes at different ages. You just got to keep, got to keep on it. And then eventually you learn how to ride the bike. Stop hitting the wire. Let's get into the review, shall we? Her body goes up. All right. So if she's going to go up. Uh, because we're on uh, hips and lower extremity muscles, she's going to have posterior pelvic girdle rotation, which is uh, also going to accompany bilateral hip extension, external force trying to flex her hips. So she's going to need her extensors to work via concentric work to make her hip extension happen in the presence of an external force. So really what I'm doing is I'm looking to identify a hip extensor through concentric work. Okay. Iliopsoas, that's a hip flexor, hip flexor. Whoa, here's two hip extensors through concentric work, okay? Gluteus maximus through concentric work. Next one. What position would you want your knee and hip if, I, to, uh, to, if optimally stretching the gracilis? So what does the gracilis do and what I mean by do, what is its function? And what I mean by function is what directions does it pull in? The gracilis is a hip adductor and it's also a knee flexor. So since it pulls in those directions, motion in those directions are gonna shorten it, motion in the opposite direction is gonna lengthen it. So since it's a knee flexor, I need to make sure that knee is extended. And since it's a hip adductor, I need to make sure that hip is abducted. Bang, knee extended, hip abducted. Simple stretching concepts. From the above position, the athlete undergoes left lateral pelvic girdle rotation. Identify two muscles that function to accomplish this. Okay, great. First, I need to identify what group of muscles need to be responsible at the trunk for left lateral pelvic girdle rotation. He starts here. I have left lateral. I need to make that happen. Nothing's trying to make it happen. So I need to make that left lateral happen because of concentric work. But what motion am I making happen at the trunk? I am making right lateral trunk bending happen at the trunk. Here's his pelvis. Right lateral trunk bending. Okay. So I need right lateral trunk benders. So identify two right lateral trunk benders. Right internal oblique, right erector spinae. Those are two muscles on the right side of my belly button. From left to right, body goes down. External force trying to extend my knees. I don't want to use my knee extensors because then I'd hurt myself. I need to use my knee flexors through eccentric work to go from left to right. Which one of these is a knee flexor through eccentric work? Gastrocnemius is a knee flexor through eccentric work. Just like 310, except we're adding individual functional muscles. The soleus and the gastroc have the same function at all different kind of things. The only thing the soleus and the gastroc have the same function at is at the ankle joint. 
working through isometric contraction. All right. This is where some of you are going to be like, Campbell, you've said that a thousand times, and I'm going to have to keep saying it another thousand times. Function of muscle is direction of pull. So working through isometric contraction doesn't matter. That, that muscle is going to have the same function, whether it's working isometrically, concentrically, eccentrically, at rest. Remember, people that die, their muscles still pull, rigor mortis. So you're, that muscle always pulls in that direction in anatomical position. So working through isometric contraction, there's no motion, but it still has a function. The, the example that I gave you in the class review is your erector spinae being cervical extensors, having a job, having a function when you need to keep your head from flexing. It's doing a job, and it's doing a job while pulling in the direction of cervical extension. A job doesn't necessarily mean you have to see motion. Stabilizer muscles, erector muscles, Prevention of motion muscles. It's doing a job. These walls don't move, but they're doing a job. Keeping the roof from falling down on me. Thank you, walls. Identify two functions of the left biceps femoris at the knee and the hip. Well, the biceps femoris at the knee is a knee flexor, and at the hip, it is a hip X, uh, left biceps femoris at the knee. Oh, when the knee is flexed. Sorry, it's fine print. So I had to squint my eyes. Left biceps femoris at the knee when the knee is flexed. So it's a knee flexor and a knee external rotator. Knee flexor and knee external rotator. Why? Because that's how it pulls when the knee is flexed. True or false, as taught very specifically in lecture, the biceps femoris function is as a hip extensor. No, both heads don't cross the hip, only the long head. So specifically per my lecture, only the long head is a hip extensor. So that would be false. Giving credit to a head of a muscle that doesn't do a job is false. Working through eccentric contraction, identify two functions. Working through eccentrics, Concentrics, isometrics, the two functions of that muscle is going to be the same. Those circles don't flip, fee, flop, fee, flop. They're the same. The pull is the same, regardless of the contraction. Working through eccentric contraction, <laughs> irrelevant. Identify two functions of the left tibia. And then if you like, well, then why put it if it's irrelevant? To see if you understand. to see if you understand. Working through eccentric contraction, identify two functions of the left tibialis anterior muscle. It's an ankle joint dorsi flexor and a subtalar joint inverter because that's how the tibialis anterior pulls. You've heard this analogy several times. An elevator cable pulls up. Whether it brings you up, keeps you from falling down, or lowers you down. An elevator cable is called an elevator cable because it's the direction of its pull. Because half of the time, it's not bringing you up. It's bringing you down while pulling up. When working eccentrically, identify two functions that the right internal oblique shares with the left external oblique, okay? So what directions does it pull? Right internal, left external, trunk flexor, because it's anterior, and right transverse trunk rotator, because that's the way the Chewbacca belt runs. From class lecture, which specific flexor muscle of the knee unlocks the knee from anatomical position? That is the popliteus. How many major muscles are being stretched at the ankle joint furthest to the left? Seven. Seven major ankle plantar flexors. Working through isometric contraction. Identify two functions of the left piriformis. Piriformis is a hip abductor and external rotator. Working through eccentric contraction. 
identify two functions of the left tibialis posterior. Tibialis posterior, plantar flexor, and ankle joint, plantar flexor, subtalar joint, inverter. That's just straight from your, if you, your circles. Okay. What would be the best way to stretch the peroneus longus? Well, since the peroneus longus is a plantar flexor everter, I need a dorsi flex invert. So ankle joint dorsi flexion, subtalar joint inversion. Simple, simple. Select one. Leg goes down. She's working her abductors concentrically to bring it up, eccentrically to lower it down, or isometrically to hold in that position. Guess what? The abductors are going to be pulling in the direction of abduction the entire time. They don't stop. Even when she relaxes, they still pull that way. So I need an abductor, and since her leg is going down, it's going to be working through eccentric work in this analogy. So which one is an abductor gluteus minimus through eccentric work? Identify two muscles that are being stretched in the above picture. This might be tricky if you don't understand how muscles work and how muscles are being lengthened. So what's his joint position? He's left transverse cervically rotated like this. I'm looking at you, but my sternum's over here. Left transverse cervically rotated. His right sternocleidomastoid is going to be shorter in this position. So guess which one's going to be longer? His left. Left sternocleidomastoid, right erector spinae are going to be lengthened. Okay, identify two muscles that are being stretched at the trunk. Again, identify position and then confirm muscles that are being lengthened. So what is her position? Is she right transverse trunk rotated or left? She is right transverse trunk rotated. Her sternum is looking at her right hip. So because she's right transverse trunk rotated, she's lengthening or stretching the left transverse trunk rotators. So I need to identify two left transverse trunk rotators, my right external oblique and my left internal oblique. So right external oblique, left internal oblique. Guys, it's that simple. Working through isometric contraction. Identify two functions of the left sartorius muscle. Sartorius. So the sartorius is a hip flexor and a knee flexor. Why? Because that's what I taught you. Identify the mus a muscle that is obviously being stretched. Look at that adductor. Her left, that's her left leg, right? You're right, but her left. We always analyze motion and muscles from the person that you are observing's perspective. Left hip adductor. Left hip adductor. Working through eccentric contraction. Identify two functions of the left rectus femoris. Okay, hip flexor and knee extensor, because that muscle pulls in the direction of hip flexion and knee extension regardless of its contraction type. It always pulls that way. That's why its function is that way. True or false, the biceps femoris is called a knee flexor because it flexes the knee. False. It's called a knee flexor because it pulls in the direction of knee flexion. Sometimes it's doing a job by preventing the knee from flexing, about more like extending. Or sometimes it could be responsible for allowing extension or slowing down extension. Sometimes that muscle has a job. It's doing a function, yet there's motion in the opposite direction of its pull. You can't say that the biceps function or it's called a flexor because it flexes the knee. Sometimes I have knee flexion because of the knee extensors. If you say that, that means every time you see flexion, it's because of this muscle. See flexion because of this muscle. And I know you've heard me say that several times before. This is an example why. We can't say this muscle does this motion. We can say this muscle does this motion with this contraction. But when we leave this part out, this muscle can be responsible for different motions through different contractions. Dead horse, beating that dead horse, don't care. Working through isometric contraction. 
Identify two functions of the left sternocleidomastoid muscle, the cervical vertebra, and the frontal and transverse plane, respectively. Left sternocleidomastoid is a left lateral cervical bender and a right transverse cervical rotator because of height pulls. Left lateral cervical bender, right transverse cervical rotator. Find it. Undergoes right transverse pelvic girdle rotation. Two muscles. These are the best. They're so much fun. So nothing's trying to make his pelvis spin right here. So if he's going to go from here and do right transverse, he has to make that happen with concentric contraction, right? Now, what motion is he going to cause at his trunk? Well, when he's hanging from a bar and he has right transverse, use my little, my little pelvis here, right transverse pelvic is going to create left transverse trunk. And he has to make that happen through concentric work. So guess what? He needs to use his left transverse trunk rotator. So guess what? That's the right external oblique, left internal oblique, left erector spinae. Right external oblique, left erector spinae. Bang, bang. Identify a hip rotator that would contribute to crossing his leg over his knee. Foot goes from the ground over his knee in this position. Nothing's going to make his external rotation happen. He needs to make it happen. So he's going to be using quadratus femoris through concentric work. You observe right subtalar joint inversion during this TheraBand exercise. Well, the band is trying to invert him. So if I observe inversion when an external force is trying to invert me, I'm going to be using everters through eccentric work. Identify one of these as an everter. Extensa digitorum longus is an everter, but this one says concentric work. This is the one that I need right there, okay? So, if I talk too fast, just rewind it, listen to it again. I need to make something clear though. We need to be on the same page. You have, you have resources, access to resources that previous semesters wish they would have had. And I'm just putting things again into perspective. Previous classes would have to come take a test in person with no open book, with no resources. And that created a sense of urgency of preparing. I think one of the things we have to acknowledge is one, we're fatigued with online learning. I'm a face to face teacher, but we got to make it work. We got to play the hand we're dealt. But two, because I allow all of you guys, and when I say all of you, previous semesters, other classes, everybody, because I allow you access to videos that you could watch repeatedly. And because I give you all the materials and, and I allow you to have an open book test, I think it creates a sense of unurgency. You are not urgent. You're like, well, why do I need to really learn all this stuff when I have it right here? And for some of you, not all, but for some of you, the answer is because if you don't really understand the material, that's not gonna help you. It's not gonna help you. I can, I can have instruction manual on how to ride a bike, and I have it right there. But when it comes time to riding a bike, it's not going to help me. Practice is what's gonna help me ride that bike. And I really feel that that's what we are dealing with, 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 with some. It's the, well, I have all the material here. Heck, I might even have old tests in front of me from previous students. Guys, I redo tests. I swap out questions. I put in new questions. You can have you can have Google at your fingertips if you don't understand the concepts, you may be in trouble. Adapt, improvise, and overcome. But you gotta grind. You gotta put in the work to understand. And if you're having trouble understanding, that's why I'm here. 24 hour, seven day a week office hours. If I'm awake and you're awake, and I'm available and you're available, we can talk about any of the content in this class. And some people take advantage of it. Dr. Campbell, I just want to make sure I understand this correctly. Dr. Campbell, here's a picture of this exercise. Dr. Campbell, here's a picture of this stretch. Dr. Campbell, am I seeing this correctly? Help me help you. Okay. To confirm that you watched this video, I would like for you to comment with what is the threshold for a C in this class, it's in your syllabus. That's how I want you to confirm that you watch this video. And after you confirm that you watch this video, then I will be happy to follow up with you guys uh, individually, in person, or virtually for those out of town. Uh, guys, I wanna help, but you gotta help me help you. Be well.